There are several things you can check when troubleshooting communication issues between the PFC Fire Alarm Control Panel and your laptop computer. This video will cover how to check the IP address of the Fire Alarm Control Panel, how to check the IP address of your laptop, and how to check to see if the communication path is good between the Fire Alarm Panel and the computer by using the command prompt. We will also show you how to adjust the IP address of your laptop to successfully communicate with the Fire Alarm Control Panel if needed. When you are direct connected from the Fire Alarm Control Panel's PCOM connection to the Ethernet jack on your computer, the panel and computer are on a private network and the panel should show an IP address of 169.254.150.70. All Potter PFC addressable Fire Alarm Panels out of the box have an IP address on a private network of 169.254.150.70. If a static IP has been set, then you will see that IP address instead of the 169.254 IP address. To learn how to set a static IP address at the Fire Alarm Control Panel, please refer to the video Setting a Static IP Address. In order to have successful communication between the Fire Alarm Control Panel and the computer, when direct connected, the IP address on the panel and the computer need to be similar. For example, if the IP address of the panel is 169.254.150.70, then the computer needs a similar IP address but not the same. For example, 169.254.150.75. When communicating with the Fire Alarm Control Panel from a laptop computer with a direct connect, the common error you'll see when the IP addresses are not similar is failed unable to connect. This error will be seen in the transfers window under status, as seen here. One of the first things to check when you have the failed unable to connect is the IP address of your laptop computer. In this particular example I'm showing Windows 7. In order to determine the IP address of your computer, you're going to want to bring up a command prompt. To do that in Windows 7, you'll go to your Start menu. At the bottom of your Start menu, you'll see the option to Search Programs and Files. In that box, you can type in the letters CMD or Charlie Michael David. Go ahead and hit the Enter key, and that'll bring up the command prompt. With the command prompt open, you can type in the letters IPConfig, I-P-C-O-N-F-I-G and can simply hit enter after that. This will bring up quite a bit of information. One of the things that we're looking for is the IP address of your computer. In this case, the IP address of my computer is 169.254.1.214. This is similar to the panel when it is in a private network when the panel has an IP address of 169.254.150.70. This indicates that I should be able to communicate successfully with the fire alarm control panel and my laptop. Another thing you can check if the IP addresses are similar, like we see here, with my laptop and the fire panel on a private network starting with 169.254. In the command prompt, we can do something called a ping. I type in the letters P-I-N-G or ping, and then I'm going to type in the IP address of the fire alarm control panel. In this particular situation, I am directly connected from my laptop computer to the fire alarm control panel. I am on a private network, so again the IP address that the fire panel has is 169.254.150.70. Go ahead and hit enter on my keyboard, and I can see that I'm getting a reply from, or a successful communication back from, the fire alarm control panel. This is a good thing to see when you see a reply from. This means that I am successfully communicating with the fire alarm control panel. I can now return back to my programming software and I should be able to communicate successfully uploading and downloading the programming files. In the event that you do not have similar IP addresses, for example, now the IP address of my laptop computer is 192.168.137.10 and I am directly connected to the fire alarm control panel. The fire alarm control panel's IP address again is 169.254.150.70. When I ping the panel from the command prompt again, typing in that IP address, it will time out, which means that I am not successfully communicating with the fire alarm control panel. What is happening here is that my computer has a static IP of 192.168.137.10 and that does not work with the IP address that the fire alarm control panel has. In this case, I will need to adjust the IP address of my laptop in order to communicate successfully. To do that, I'm going to go to my control panel by going to the start menu and selecting control panel. 
From here, I'm going to select Network and Sharing. This is in alphabetical order, so find Network and Sharing. And from here, I'm going to go to the left and it says Change Adapter Settings. So I'm going to click on Change Adapter Settings. From here, I'm adjusting my local area connection. So I'm going to right click on where it says local area connection, not worrying about my wireless or my local area connection too, just local area connection. I'm going to right click over that and select properties. From here, I'm working on my IP address and this is version 4. So through this list here, I can see Internet Protocol version 4. I'm going to click on that so it's highlighted and then I'm going to select properties. From here I can see that their static IP address has been set. What I'd like to do is obtain an IP address automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and select that radio button. I'm going to also obtain a DNS server automatically. So I'm going to select that radio button. I'm now going to select OK. And I'm going to close out of the uh, local area connection. And I'm going to go back to my, I can even close this one here, I'm going to go back to my uh, command prompt. Now when you make these types of changes, they do not happen um, instantaneously. So I'm going to type in ipconfig and see what my computer says. Now in this case, my computer has very quickly adjusted its IP address. It is now back to a 169.254 format, which again should successfully communicate with the fire alarm control panel. So again, I can try and ping or communicate with the panel by typing in PING space and then the IP address of the fire alarm control panel. And again, I'm getting that reply from. So now I know I can successfully communicate again with the fire alarm control panel. If a static IP address has been set at the fire alarm control panel, you may need to set a static IP at your laptop computer in order to communicate successfully. When you direct connect from your laptop computer to the fire alarm control panel, the fire alarm control panel will tell you the IP address. In this case, you can see the IP address of my fire alarm control panel when direct connected is 192.168.150.10. It no longer has that private network IP address. A static IP address has been assigned to this fire alarm control panel. If your laptop computer does not have a similar IP address, a static IP address will need to be assigned to your laptop computer. Again, you can check the IP address of your laptop computer by bringing up the command prompt and typing in the letters ipconfig. You can check to see if there is successful communication by pinging the IP address as given to you by the, the fire alarm control panel, 192.168.150.10. If a static IP needs to be assigned to the laptop computer, you're going to again go into your control panel. So go to the start menu and select control panel. From here we're going to select network and sharing. Again we're going to change the adapter settings. and We're going to go to our local area connection. We're going to right click on this and select properties. Again we are working with our Internet Protocol version 4 IP address. So select Internet Protocol version 4, get that highlighted, and then select Properties. And from here, I can set a static IP by selecting this radio button, use the following IP address. And here I can type in 192, 168, 150, and since the fire alarm control panel is 10, I'm going to select 9. It'll automatically fill in the subnet mask, and then you can go ahead and fill in the default gateway. This information can also be found at the fire alarm control panel by going into menu option number 5, system tools, and then from there selecting ethernet to tools. Once this information is filled in, you can go ahead and select OK, and then you can close this out. Now at this point I can go back to my command prompt. I'm going to do again an IP config to see if this has been set. Again, it sometimes takes a few seconds for this to configure itself. You can see that it's been set here. My IP address is what I set it to. If it doesn't come up right away, just give it a few moments and then try this again. And now I'm going to see if I can ping that fire alarm control panel. And again, I'm direct connected, but the fire alarm control panel has been given a static IP, so I need to adjust the IP address on my laptop computer, which is what we've just done, in order to communicate successfully.
Now I'm pinging that IP address that is statically set at the fire alarm control panel and again I'm getting that reply from so I should be able to successfully communicate between the computer and the fire alarm control panel with the programming software on a direct connect when the static IP has been assigned to the fire alarm control panel. In this video we covered how to check the IP address of the fire alarm control panel when direct connected by viewing the home screen. We showed you how to check the IP address of your computer by using the command prompt and the ipconfig command. We also showed you how to check for successful communication using the command prompt using the ping command. And lastly we showed you how to adjust the IP address of your computer by accessing the network and sharing menu and the IP version 4 properties. These things should help when troubleshooting communication between the fire alarm control panel and the laptop computer when you are direct connected. For more information, please visit our website www.pottersignal.com.